Picture yourself standing at the edge of an ancient forest. The trees tower above, leaves rustling like whispers. Sunlight fades to near darkness within a few steps. A narrow path cuts through the shadowed undergrowth, twisting and turning towards the heart of the wood. There, shrouded in mystery, lies the mouth of a cave. It beckons and repels in equal measure. A strange mix of trepidation and excitement fills your chest. Legends speak of untold riches within, more gold than you'll ever need, profound knowledge and wisdom, and magic with the ability to unlock your truest potential. Yet stories also tell of monstrous guardians and perilous traps, just as you do every day. When you walk past the same spot on your daily walk to the village, you consider whether you should take the risk to enter or not. You hesitate with one foot on the familiar path and the other drawn to the unknown. What truly will you find down there and what is it that is really holding you back? Joseph Campbell, the scholar of myth, famously said that the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. It was him that introduced the concept of the hero's journey that we touched on in lesson 14. The archetypal story of adventure Descent into the unknown, confrontation with challenges, and eventual return, transformed with treasure in hand. The beginning of this journey is always a call to adventure, often into the unknown. And most importantly for us, this call is frequently refused at first. Why do we avoid things that could bring us great benefit? From an objective perspective, it just seems illogical. When we hear a story, that features a call to confront what is being avoided, we know that stepping out into the unknown is the right thing to do. But when we're in the situation ourselves, full of the emotion and full of self-doubt and anxiety, it's often easier to just keep on walking and going back to the daily grind. We all have our own scary caves calling us to adventure. The call to adventure might be a risky job opportunity, a difficult conversation, a long neglected passion, or actually taking a step back from a much loved project. Of course, there is immediate safety in our avoidance. It's natural to avoid these things. Our survival instincts honed over millennia are hardwired to avoid potential dangers. But putting things off and sweeping things under the rug comes at a significant cost. Procrastination, a common guise for avoidance slowly erodes our self-confidence and fuels self-doubt. Each time that we delay taking action, we reinforce the false narrative that we're not capable. Each time that we delay taking action, we reinforce the false narrative that we're not capable. We miss opportunities and the potential treasures within that cave remain buried. Worse yet, the longer we avoid, the stronger our fear becomes, making the eventual confrontation even more daunting. Procrastination, in essence, is a form of self-betrayal. It's about choosing short-term comfort over the promise of growth and long-term benefits. Our potential remains unfulfilled and our dreams wither on the vine, longing to be harvested. Going back to Carl Jung from the last lesson, he believed that our unconscious motivations and hidden desires often drives our behavior in more ways than we realize. One core aspect of the unconscious is what Jung termed the shadow self. The shadow is where we regulate the parts of ourselves that we deem unacceptable. Anger, envy, shame, sexual desires, even our hidden talents and positive potential. When we avoid certain actions or situations, it's often because they stir up these shadow aspects, threatening to expose what we desperately want to keep hidden. The key to overcoming avoidance isn't to suppress the shadow, but to integrate it. Like pieces of our fragmented identity, these shadow elements can sabotage our journey and efforts if we continue to ignore them. Only by entering into the darkness and bringing those fractured aspects of ourselves into the light of awareness can we regulate ourselves properly. Noticing what we're avoiding by analyzing ourselves objectively, noticing what we're avoiding by analyzing ourselves objectively is one of the easiest ways to be able to enter into this darkness and become aware 
of the fractured elements of self. Today's exercise is about becoming aware of what we're avoiding in our lives. One of the easiest ways to do this is simply to ask yourself, what is it that you procrastinate around the most? When you procrastinate, you are avoiding and something is causing you to avoid that thing. But avoidance is not just procrastination. Here are some other examples of forms it takes. Being busy, but not productive. Do you fill your days with whirlwinds of activity? or distracting yourself from deeper priorities. Next is the perfectionist's trap. Does a fear of not being good enough prevent you from actually starting a project or sharing your work? Another is numbing and escapism. Do you find yourself turning to substances, social media, binge watching, or other numbing activities excessively? And another, of course, is relational avoidance. Do you habitually avoid intimacy or consistently choose partners who are emotionally unavailable or avoid challenging conversations? So start with a new page or document and at the top write what I am avoiding. So start with a new page or document and at the top write what I'm avoiding and start to list all the things that you are avoiding in your own life. You could go back and look over your life satisfaction questionnaire, your values hierarchy, or other previous exercises to help trigger thoughts around these things. But remember this one thing when you're doing this. This isn't about judgment. It's about honest self-discovery. In the next exercise, we'll start to dig into the roots of what is causing you to avoid these things. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, to avoid facing their own souls. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Carl Jung. This quote cuts straight to the core of avoidance. It's far easier to create a whirlwind of busyness or to seek the comfort of distractions than to turn inwards and face the parts of ourselves that we prefer to hide. But true growth, the discovery of treasures within, requires us to venture into this metaphorical cave. The treasures you seek won't be found on the familiar path. They lie within the darkness that you perhaps have spent a lifetime avoiding. By acknowledging what you put off, like the projects left unfinished, or the difficult conversations that you evade, you start to illuminate the path to the treasures of a more self-aware, integrated, and authentic you.